In my beginning video, I have already mentioned that I find it of utmost importance to strive for truth. However, the character of truth is such that, mathematically speaking, to every truth there is an alternative of mistruth that exceeds the infinite. Thus, having even one piece of truth is something that exceeds the miraculous. Yet this one piece of truth has to be found, as the ocean of lies that surrounds it is strong enough to send humans into wars and to kill each other. Even if we have to dedicate our entire lives to finding it, we still have to set out for it. To make this easier and to make us able to bear the onslaught of the eternal ocean of lies, there are two tools that can help us. One way to prevent a war is to make a war. Not a war against our enemies, but a war against ourselves. One sheath a sword and unsheath it, not against the enemy in hate, but one sheath it against ourselves and all that is base and vile. For it is well to remember that God hates peace in those who are destined for war. There are two aspects of a sword, cutting and piercing. Through cuts, it separates things from one another. Through pierces, it attacks a specific point in isolation. The sword can be used to engage any problem, any situation, any task, face to face. First, it must be used to cut the problem into sensible chunks. These chunks should all be centered around a single point, which may then be pierced. The wielding of the sword requires technique. Its blade is double-edged and a wrongly positioned strike will only hurt ourselves. The technique of the mental blade is logic. The pivot of its swing is previously uncovered fact. It needs to be swung without emotion, by an unfettered mind giving into each strike fully no matter how it is to be exercised or against whom. Wielding the sword means being like the wind, graceful, without ties to the ground, free, aloof, focused and without troubles. We have to detach whatever we are facing from its origin, its messenger, its formulation, even if the way it is formulated is intended to hurt, and its indirect implications. Rather, we have to engage it with its own logic its inner coherence and work from there. The champion of this tool might be the fictional character of Sherlock Holmes or the sly French aristocrat Talleyrand. With the modern obsession with science, reason, mathematics and correctness, it seems obvious that we are living in an era that clings to the sword and the popularity of characters such as the aforementioned two speaks to that as well. This, however, brings with it also the weaknesses of the sword. The greatest weakness of the sword is that it gets overwhelmed. We may try to face each situation on its own turf, but we are confronted with millions of problems, situations, tasks and idiosyncrasies every day. Trying to solve each individually is simply impossible. Thus, we are looking for something that might not be as precise as the sword, but that makes up for it in effectiveness. Something that might not be able to engage any specific problem as well as the sword does, but therefore helps us engage the millions of problems we have to engage every day. In short, we are looking for something that supplies a heuristic.
There are two ways of getting to truth. One is logic, taking aspects of truth and putting them together to deduce an ever-growing picture, as is done, for example, in science. The other, and the one necessarily preceding logic, which needs truths already uncovered, is evolution, having claims stand the test of time. Truth is power, and so, over generations, those who have higher claims to truth have a higher survival chance. Thus, our intergenerational knowledge evolves to be in line with truth. This is the torch, handed down generation to generation, with each member of the chain having to keep its flame lit, adding to it and preserving it. As it gets passed down the generations, its wisdom disconnects from the set time frame and only those things that are not bound to a specific environment are preserved. Thus, it brings forth generalized knowledge, or wisdom. The longer a torch gets passed down, the wiser it thus becomes. Where in the case of the sword, we might talk of rational thought. In the case of the torch, we might talk of legacy thought. And so it is a typical torch practice to light on the torch of another with higher prestige, greater legacy, whose flame we believe to burn brighter. Although this practice is somewhat risky, as we never know if the torch of another is really as pristine as it seems. The general nature of the torch enables it to burn away or dry out the endless onslaught of minor problems. This also means that we are ignorant of their idiosyncrasies, but that ignorance has to be allowed in favor of being able to handle day-to-day -day life. The proof of a torch lies not in its inner cohesion and logic, but in its enactment. The saying, the proof of the pudding is in eating it, applies here. Finally, it seems that in the modern age, we have abandoned the torch altogether, as we believe ourselves to be better than the thousand generations before us. But our being better is not proof of our greatness, but of their greatness, as they handed over the torch brighter than before. Something I definitely want to make clear is that the sword is not logic, and that the torch is not heuristic. These two should be truly understood as a mental sword and a mental torch, and their usage corresponds to a physical sword and a physical torch. Logic and heuristics are merely facets of their use. Furthermore, foregoing their practice will make the outer swords and torches of war, bloody skirmish and civil strife inevitable. To further solidify my claims of these two tools, I would like to remind you that there is a reason we call people of extraordinary intelligence sharp and people of extraordinary promise bright. Finally, if we combine both sword and torch, we get the hero's sword, often said to burn, glow or to be folded a thousand times. This symbol is usually a piece of inheritance gifted by a father or older descendant. It is the symbol of ultimate potency, being able to apply the wisdom of the torch through its blade and to refine the fire so that it may be handed off brighter to the next generation. As such, do not use your wit to fight off your descendants' legacy, but rather to preserve it, to enlarge it. Do not abandon your roots, but rather embrace them. And with sword and with torch, you shall engage this world.